Join me as we take our family table using these to create this. This magic was created with resin, mosaics, and a lot of love. Howdy, howdy, this is Clara Lawrence, and I have been collecting these guys for quite some time. Whenever I have leftover resin, I will pour it into these little ice tray molds that come up with the little one by one squares. And of course, since I've messed around with a lot of colors, I get a variety of colors. I pre sort them out to light, medium, dark in the same color category and put them off to the side whenever I have a mosaic project. I can raid my stash for some mosaics. So here's the project for today. It's our family table from the kitchen. It's been well loved. It's 24, five years old. Uh, you can see all the weathering and the hand, you know, wear and tear on it. In fact, it's even warped. I didn't even worry about it as far as it being warped a little bit. Uh, we, we did the basic prep on it, sanded it really good up to it started uh off course from 80 worked it up to 120 to 220 and got it prepped up did a primer on it and a stone coat base coat for some resin preparation is key priming it doing a base coat sand in between do light coats light coat is key do not overbuild it and definitely sand and dust in between your coats on this. It is crucial so that your resin will bond with your surface. All right, so I have a design drawn out on the table, but I'm working with these really thick tiles. They're, actually I was wrong before, they're about a quarter of an inch in size. But while I'm laying out the lines, I know I'm going to have to edit my design a little bit to compensate for the chunkier tiles. I mean, think of it this way, you're drawing with a thin marker and next thing you know you have a thick marker to work around. So obviously you've got to change up some things. And I want to incorporate flows of color going through the panel almost as if wind is blowing or there's movement happening. And so I'm going to have lines of colored resin going through either with the tiles or with the actual resin itself but there's definitely movement going from right to left, or you could say, you know, when going over the horses as well. So yeah, keeping, always keeping in check with my design. Um, I have the design uh, uh, taped to a table in the studio that I can always reference to. I am using a glue a basic glue uh, is common with uh mosaics and also common with wood uh tight bond is the glue and it just makes it a little bit easier to lay it out a little bit by a little bit i have this table set up in the middle of my studio whenever i get a chance i'll put in a couple hours here and there on working through the process there was a couple weeks where i didn't wasn't able to do any work on it and then i picked it up again um, it is a project that you can start and stop whenever you need to, or you can just muscle through it and keep going. It is time consuming. I will give you that. I love playing around with different textures. Let me give you an example. I've got resin tiles in there. They're very shiny. Some are solid colors. Some are multiple colors. Uh, I also mix in some marble in there. I've got two different tones of marble. They give a very earthy feel to it. Also, the nice thing about those is I can clip them really easily, whereas the resin tiles I cannot. And I have to work around the rigid shape, especially if they've cured for quite some time. I've got some tiny stones that I'm going to be using as filler for some of this little spaces. Plus, it adds a different texture in there. And I love incorporating other textures. As you can see here, I'm incorporating the lines that go through the horses onto the rest of the negative space but it's not exactly going to be negative space i'm going to be filling it with other elements i've got a hold of some really pretty wood that i decided to slice up i sealed it with a polyacrylic on both sides so that way it wouldn't 
uh, create air bubbles with the resin because I am planning on using a lot of resin with this project. So I've got a couple different species of woods. I love, again, the different texture elements, the different colors. The different sizes can add to the effect like the long skinny pieces in the mane can add to the flowiness of the, the hair. The base of the wood that I've added to the background also add a bit of stability, a grounding effect. Uh, in this case, it also added additional textures and such. And you even see putting in different circles, glass beads, things that would reflect colors. Um, even the filler that I'm using here, uh, the filler was intentionally used for to create that fill in those negative spaces with the, uh, the little resin tiles, but I also thought it would be really nice as far as the texture element within itself. And so I dug around and found some other ones that would work with the wood, uh, even found sand particles that were close to the wood to fill in the cracks and such. Um, I've even gone in with mosaics and separated out grains of sand, you know, from light and dark. Uh, they were larger particles, not little teeny tiny ones, but it did help with blending or filling in crevices because the plan is to use resin as my grout, not actually grout this. So I want the grout to also glue these little elements down as well and to create help create that added depth with each element that I put in there uh, resin will help me out with the additional depth all right the next step after this when I get all the little bits down is resin time and I am going to create several layers of resin the first one is basically to help glue down the little especially all the little teeny weeny pieces and such keep that in place the second part is to help build up those negative space where I haven't done any stone because I have a plan for that and I need it to be a nice level surface and also build up the height a little bit. So the first one's really loose. You can even see all the squiggle patterns. That's okay. Um, I'll do a light sanding in between each coat before applying it and on all the resin coats I've used stone coat countertops formula and it works so nicely with this project. So I have an assistant on the second pour, uh, and that's my son, Mikey. He is going to be joining me on my adventures with uh, resin and other art projects, and he's going to be incorporating his ideas. We're going to be doing a lot of projects together, so you'll be seeing a lot more of him in this. So this next layer, I am also incorporating another element. Uh, I've got a couple small cups of interference colors and I believe a chameleon color in there. I'll put the images at the end of the video of what products I used. And that's just to add a little bit of shimmer to it. Like when the, you know, you turn around and you're looking at the piece, you know, some little particles of the interference will catch your eye, that kind of thing. So really as for, I, I like it especially when I'm doing pieces with a lot of depth in mind. And this is what I'm swirling on right now. It's just a little bit of interference and chameleon. And what I also like to do is right after I've laid it out as far as little lines, I will go back through with my hands to try to mess with the lines so they don't look like they're just like freshly poured lines. It actually blends. Hit it with a little bit of my heat gun and you saw that flare out a little bit. So that was really nice. All right, now for these big open areas. I want to use and continue with the blues, um, a little bit of purple hint in there, a little bit of turquoise and some gold. And I'm messing around with alcohol inks. I've got some alumilite dyes in there. I've also got uh, brass in there, which is the gold. Uh, and that's by Pinata. I will try to incorporate a uh, picture or screen capture at the end of this video with the products I use. What I didn't expect when I was moving this around is, uh, you know, some of the alcohol goes over the stones. And at first I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do some cleanup afterwards and just, just focus on getting the movement in that space looking really nicely and then do cleanup afterwards. But what was really cool is that the gold added 
some elements of gold onto the stones also. So it, it left little touches here and there. And I ended up just doing some spot cleanup, not a whole lot. And where it also went into the little stones, it helped kind of incorporate all those elements together. So that was a nice added surprise. Um, sometimes, you know, happy accidents. One last detail I wanted to work on was just a couple of features in the horses, a little bit in the jawline, a little bit um, in the nose or mouth, but definitely bringing out the eyes more. It was almost like a drawing line for the jawline and stuff like that. So I wasn't really worried about that too much. With the eyes, I wanted to put a little bit more detail on it. It really helped it out considerably. What was interesting is when I put on another resin coat on this particular brown, there was a bunch of different colors that were used to make this particular brown. And you see the colors come out a little bit more, like some of the greens came out after the resin was poured. And sometimes that kind of thing can happen. But overall, super, super happy with it. And now it's just a matter of building up the resin. I did do a UV spray on top of the alcohol ink just to keep everything set in place because I believe there was also some resin art color in there and I think I used Blue Moon. And those will leave a little particles and such and I don't want that to get picked up. Alright, I got another coat of resin on here. Still need a little bit more. You can see some texture popping up still. If I hold it at an angle. But we're close. We're very close. Just need to keep pressing on. And this was an old table, so it was kind of bowing in the middle there. And I expected it to pull a little bit more in the middle. And that's okay, because it was a family table. And we're going to get some more use out of it. But, yep, more resin. This shows that I've been sanding in between each coat, but you'll also see as I'm applying the resin, it just goes right into all those little cracks and disappears, but it also creates a mechanical bond, which is very helpful with multiple layers. But it's still kind of cool to see it pour on. And this is a real good example of how I believe resin really makes alcohol inks come alive. Look at all that color just popping up. This turned out so pretty. All right, sir. And all the different elements mm -hmm. of like uh, the grass and the interference. Oh, love it. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video, but I got to share with you some of the latest things on this. So I did the final couple pours to get it up to uh, where the resin was all level. No stones were popping up. And at that point, I pulled tape off and did my final pour of resin where I could go up over the edge. And another thing I did just before I did that is I painted the edge of the table black and went up the, uh, the side of the stone a little bit. And that just gives a really clean edge. I did that with my mother's table. I did this mosaic table for my mama and also embedded it in resin but I painted the edges right at the last minute black and went up the tile a little bit and it gave it a really nice clean edge to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the horse table as well. Also, just like this, mosaics and resin uh, instead of the grout. Uh, I didn't do alcohol ink on her table though. Um, and it just left a very clean edge because on her edge, her stones weren't all the same height. They were all irregular shapes. And it was really distracting. I couldn't figure out how to do it nice and clean. And I did that and I've been super happy with the results since then. Another tip, um, we all know that resin loves to attract dust and hair and stuff like that. And since all my supplies are pretty much packed up in the storage, a helpful hint to get rid of uh, hairs is just take your mixing sticks, crack them up, and you'll end up getting a really nice point on the end of it. And that really helps for getting the uh, hairs out. Uh, and you can use your phone to help you out with reflections too, because that makes the, really, the hairs really stand out too. So yeah, what do you guys think? I'm super happy. 
This guy is going to be living in my kitchen area again, and the kids are happy because we've been dealing with a little plastic portable table, um, and it has just not been meeting our needs at all. And so now we have a new table, but I am stoked. I think it turned out super cool, and I'm loving all the depth that is coming into this guy. And there's so much to look at. So many sparkles. I mean, even each one of these little bitty stones, or not even stones, but the little score bits. Remember, those are all resin, so each one of those is a different pour. Let's see if I can well, zoom in and it be focused. There we go. I mean, each one of those little stones is a different pour from in the past. So it's got lots to look at. There's layers of glitter in there, different kinds of stones, some interference. See if I can move this around slowly. A little bit of touches of alcohol ink. I didn't want it to be too much. A little bit of background there. Focus. Let me get back out of the zoom. Maybe that'll help. As promised, I used Art Coat by Stone Coat. I get that through Rhonda Jaculis over at RK3 Designs. And all my colors, I get it through ATD at artstilldeath.com. Check in the description below for links and also a coupon code. And of course, I had to share with you the table once it's in our kitchen. So it's in its new home. I haven't yet put a top coat on there yet. Um, the UTC, I guess I'm just enjoying the fact that it's finished <laughs> for now. Um, so when I get caught up on a few projects, I'll probably come back through and put a UTC on there because that stuff is just, it's fabulous, especially for family life or something that's getting well-loved and used and such. Uh, so we definitely want to protect this for the years to come. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and look for more videos. We have got a lot going on. We have got projects. Oh, we you should see our to-do list. Oh my goodness. And Mikey joining in on my team. We're going to be bringing in all kinds of new elements. So super exciting stuff. So hit that subscribe button for me, especially if you stayed on this long. I really appreciate it. And here's two more videos in the future. Later, y'all.